I was saying that I feel like Jesse up here. I'm going to come up here and unload my pockets. Except for the fact that there is literally nothing in my pockets. I just came up here with a bunch of stuff in my hands. And, um, whew, okay, so I'm going to ask you guys to take one nice deep breath for me. Mostly because I need it. Jesse does not take much time off. And I wasn't expecting to do two weeks in a row. <laughs> and here I am. So, and it is an honor and a privilege because I get to kick off the new series. Uh, and I, do you guys read the emails when he sends them out about what the series is? Okay. I don't always until after I've heard the first talk because I use that to create the YouTube. Um, what, what I put on the YouTube. Um, and so I was like, well, I guess I better go read it this time. What are we, what are we gonna talk about for the rest of the month? Okay, so I actually copied it and pasted it in my notes. So the theme of the month is materializing the spiritual. It's a study in contrasts, okay? So January is back to the basics. We go right back to the basics and we talk about the basics and it's always a good review. No matter how long you have been in the science of mind, January is a good review because you're always going to take something to a deeper level. You like, I've heard it on the surface, and this time, oh, and you just pull it a little deeper each time. And then February was like, okay, we're going to start practicing this now. But that's what we do for the rest of the year, right? So last, I think the last time that Jesse was here, he made this comment. Our philosophy can be said to be simple, but not simplistic. So everything's not one way or another. And often it is a paradox, which makes our heads spin and it doesn't feel good. And then we have to sit with that and go, all right, but what does it mean? And what am I supposed to do with this? Well, Today, we're going to study contrast. The title is literally just self-esteem and humility. Do those two words go together? Eh, maybe, maybe. So let's define our terms. I literally looked it up. Does anybody still own a dictionary or do we all just Google it? I do own a dictionary, I don't know where it is. <laughs> So I Googled it, and Merriam-Webster, thank God, has a really good online dictionary. So self-esteem, it is a noun, and it means a confidence and a satisfaction in oneself. Okay? You knew that, right? Humility, also a noun. Freedom from pride or arrogance. Were you expecting that? So just out of curiosity, I looked up, okay, wait, no, back up. Are you aware in the Science of Mind textbook, there's a glossary in the back, okay? So I looked up self-esteem in the glossary. Guess what? It's not in there, but humility is. So let's talk about what Ernest said about humility in the back. And here's where I begin the quotes, but this is literally in the Science of Mind text. Because he quotes Emerson in his definition. So, in the glossary, true humility is not self-abasement, but rather that attitude which Emerson tells us is willing to get its bloated nothingness out of the way of the divine circuits. It is an intelligent recognition that the whole is greater than any one of its parts. Then he quotes Exodus, stand and watch the sure salvation of the Lord. And I'm like, one, he didn't tell me where that was from, so I had to Google it. And then two, I was like, okay, but what has that got to do with humility? Let's go back to the Emerson quote. Emerson is not my favorite, never has been, although I'm learning to love Emerson. Okay, I'm learning to like Emerson. <laughs> I don't know that I'm ever gonna love Emerson, 
But you hear that quote about getting our bloated nothingness out of the way. Have you ever heard of the divine circuits? That gets left out a lot. And cause he's always talking about our bloated nothingness, and I'm like, I, it just conjures up things that I don't want to think about. But getting our bloated nothingness out of the way of the divine circuits. When I heard the divine circuits, I went, oh, I understand this quote now. It's partly about getting out of our own way. And partly about getting out of spirit's way. Because we ask for spirit. We ask spirit for a whole lot of things, right? And then we say, but. But. Or we say, it's got to be this way. You know, I want this house on this corner with this paint job. Oh, no, that would be a car, wouldn't it? Okay, point being, we start to limit spirit. And so some of humility is about that, about not limiting spirit. It's about getting our bloated nothingness because sometimes when we ask for things, we don't know what we're talking about. We don't know what we're asking for. We don't know what we're asking for on a deep level. We know what we're asking for at a surface level. And so I have a Monday through Friday mortgage paying job. I love my Monday through Friday mortgage paying job, okay? But sometimes people will come in and they say, I want this. And I ask them a couple of questions. And I go, well, okay. One, what you're asking for doesn't do what you think it's going to do. And two, you're taking a medication the country indicates that. But if you want something that will do this, let me suggest this. So they walk out having bought something completely different than what they came in for. But they still are going to get the result that they came in for. Those are those divine circuits that we want to get our bloated nothingness out of the way of. Sometimes what we think we want hmm, ain't what we need. I'm not going to quote the Rolling Stones, even though I just did, right? Okay, now, I also pulled up the concordance, which is a big word <laughs> for a little book. You ever seen the concordance for the Bible? Oh, those things are huge. Um, but the concordance, you can look up any word in the concordance and see how many times in the science of mind text, Ernest mentioned it. Do you know how many times he mentioned self-esteem in the science of mind text? Exactly zero. And I'm like, Ernest, you're not giving me anything. Help me out here. He mentioned humility twice. And that's it. So I picked one of them. So this is from the Science of Mind text. Page 368 if you want to look it up. Proud of his divinity and yet humble before the greatness of the whole, Jesus spoke dot, dot, dot. I'm not going to give you the rest of the quote because it doesn't matter. Jesus spoke with authority, right? That's what they teach us. Jesus spoke with the authority of the divine every time. But he spoke from a place of humility, of understanding that he was a part of the divine, not the whole. Now, Ernest may have mentioned self-esteem and a humility a lot. Have y'all seen these little books? There's a bunch of them. This thing called You is My Favorite. This one's This, Us, this is Up to You. So if he's going to talk about self-esteem, this is probably where it is. But he wrote a bunch of these little books. Although I don't think he wrote them. I think these are transcribed talks, which is why they're better than the Science of Mind textbook. Did I just say that out loud? Yes, I did. And I meant it. The science of mind can be a bit of a slog in the textbook. Go read some of his other books. Trust me on this. If you're having a hard time working your way through the science of mind text, go get this thing called you. I can almost promise you that if you ask every science of mind minister to name their top five books, this thing called you would be, would be in the top five. All right, so we're going to talk about humility and self-esteem. We've already been talking about it. One of the things that we talk about is, well, no, 
the way we tend to look at life, we tend to look at life as two sides of a coin. It's this or that, this or that. It's black or white. Now, I have an amazing partner. I told you that last week, right? So I was, we, were, we were in the park on yesterday, and he says, so tell me what you're talking about tomorrow. And so I start working my way through it. And we're talking about this idea of black and white. And he pointed out that a lot of people who, are, who have that black and white mindset are not very compassionate. And I went, oh, you know, I'd never thought about it that way. And here's where you use, I, I like to use the, the phrase, we live in shades of gray, okay? Now, there was an anthropologist named Clifford Geertz. And he had a definite impact on me. Now, my undergraduate degree is in archaeology, but archaeology is a subfield of anthropology. And I read a whole lot of Clifford Geertz. And that's where I got that idea from, that we live in shades of gray. It was in one of his essays. Now, he was a, uh, a symbolic anthrop anthropologist. He was like big into symbols. So I'm going to quote him for you just really quickly. The function of culture is to impose meaning on the world and make it understandable. Is that not what we try and do every day? We wake up, we open our eyes, we look around at the world, and we go, what does this mean? Things happen, and we go, what does this mean? Do you know how many meanings there are in the world for just anything? How many people are there in the world? We all have our own perceptions, our own ideas. So there's this concept that we have a tendency to live with called either or. But it goes back to that black and white. It can be either this thing or it can be that thing. Well, life isn't like that. Life is, as we like to say, a spectrum. Kind of like light. Light is a spectrum. Life is a spectrum. Everything is a spectrum or a continuum. So our goal is to find a healthy balance in whatever it is that we're working on. It's not either or. It is not black or white. I did say shades of gray, but then I said, well, if life's a spectrum, well, what's a good visual analogy of a spectrum, a rainbow. And then the rainbow reminded me of one other thing. There's a whole lot of spectrums of light that we can't see. So we want to give each other some grace because maybe you're seeing a light that I don't see. Maybe I'm seeing a light that you don't see. So as we're moving along this spectrum and finding this healthy balance, you want to know what image came to my mind? That awful scale in the doctor's office. Uh -huh. Yeah, none of us like that scale. I always take my shoes off. It doesn't help. But when I was in ministerial school, I learned this new idea, not either or, both and. I was in a class, and Reverend Patrick said both and. I darn near lost my mind. I went, wait, what? What, what is this? What is both and? You mean I can have both? I can have both, and I can have more. So that's the good thing about self-esteem and humility. And in fact, I have this whole slew of quotes that I may or may not use, <laughs> which is why I gave them to Danielle. It's like, just in case. One of the quotes said,
Humility is often a trait associated with those who actually have high self-esteem and high confidence. The reason for this is simple. By being secure in yourself and your achievements, you do not need to put on a show to impress others. Both and. That's from Lee, I don't even know if I can pronounce that last name. Nail La Lingam Ham. Yeah, that wasn't even close, I'm sure. I should have practiced that in the mirror a couple of times before I tried to say it live, right? So self-esteem is knowing that we are made of God's stuff. And humility is knowing that we are but a tiny sliver. If you break us down into our most fundamental parts, we can talk about molecules. We can talk about electrons, neutrons. We can talk about photons. You should go see the, th the single photon theory. You want to blow your mind? Ooh. Quantum physics. We're all made of the same stuff. If we're all made of the same stuff, then we're all made of God's stuff. The power that we use in our life all of the time to do whatever it is that we do, that creativity, that joy, that peace, that's God's power. So self-esteem is knowing that the power that we use is God's power. And humility is knowing that we only hold a tiny little bit of it at a time. Knowing that we are beloved expressions of the divine and that everybody else is too. We are electrons dancing. When I heard that, I was like, oh, that is really cool. Now I'm going to circle back to the it's all God stuff. Okay? Just because I think we get used to living in this world and we forget that it's all God stuff. It's easy to look at our fellow godlings, look in their eyes and see God looking back at us. It might be mostly easy to look at every living being and see God looking back at us. I'm talking about the cats and the dogs and the cows and the spiders. They got eight of them, so you know they got plenty of eyes to look back at. But have you considered that the chair you're sitting in is God's stuff? The book that I'm waving around up here, that's God's stuff. It should occasionally rock us back on our heels when we look around at the world, both animate and inanimate. It is all God's stuff. And I don't say that to make us feel small. I say that to remind us to tread carefully, to make good decisions, to treat each other and everything kindly, compassionately, lovingly. The good news about us living on a spectrum and finding that healthy balance is because we live on a spectrum, we are capable of growth and change. And occasionally, we do get snatched up or rocked back on our heels, as I like to say. And the world shows us something and we go, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. We forget who we are and it's okay. Because we have each other to remind I want to remind you, because we're talking about self-esteem, right? You know what the difference between selfishness and self-care is? 
Selfishness is putting your needs above others. No, hang on. Putting your wants above others' needs. There it is. Self-care is putting your needs above others' wants. Okay? Self-esteem is part of that. Self-esteem is a gift to remember who you are. I have one more point, but I think I'm going to get over here. I want to give you some of these quotes because they're so good. So good. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. Humility is thinking of yourself less. We can be courageous and contrite at the same time. I'm going to say it's Chris Hodges. You don't know who he is. Too many people these days mistake humility for weakness when the ability to remain humble in today's self-centered world is actually a gift. That's T.W. Lawless. That's a cool name. Lawless. A bird sitting in a tree is never afraid of the branch breaking because its trust is not in the branch but in its own wings. I love that. That's one of my favorite quotes. That's attributed to Charlie uh, Wardle. I didn't know that. When we feel connected to our spiritual source, we live effectively, love well, and give back to life. That's the theme this month. That's why we're looking at these contrasts. That's why we're looking at what is self-esteem and why should I have it? You know how Emma says there's good in this world and you should have it? Well, self-esteem is that good. There is good in this world and you should have it. You should have a good self-esteem. You should trust in your wings. And all humility asks you to do is remember whose you are. Self-esteem is who you are. Humility is whose you are. There was one more little thing about humility, and it was the phrase authentic rather than performative. Okay? All right? Because practitioners and ministers do perform. Okay? This is not a performance, but we do perform our duties. We do pray out loud for you. But when we do it, we are coming from a place of authenticity. So when you're looking at the difference between self esteem and humility, you want to make sure that you are coming from a place of authentically you, authentically spirit. What is the essence of Lisa? I want to tell you that the essence of Lisa is a kind, compassionate, loving heart with a little bit of a temper. <laughs> That's authentic. That's not performative. And that is why when practitioners pray for you, there's two things about it that you, you want to remember. Practitioners are treating themselves. They are not treating you. They are not healing you. They are holding the space for healing to come to you. But that's on you. You got to be willing to accept it. We are revealing the truth, not creating it. Okay? All right, I'm going to go through these really quick. Make sure I didn't leave anything good out. Oh, yeah, there was one last little quote that I might give you here. Okay. Because I've talked a lot about continuum and spectrum and what have you. But when I was looking up, I swear that there is this really amazing 
Alan Watts' quote about spectrums, and I could not find it. But instead, I found this one from May Jimson. The difference between science and the arts is not that they are different sides of the same coin or even different parts of the same continuum, but rather they are manifestations of the same thing. The arts and scientists, sciences are avatars of human creativity. Okay, so if I substituted the words self-esteem and humility in that, the difference between self-esteem and humility is not that they are two sides of the same coin, even, or different parts of the same continuum but rather they are manifestations of the same thing. Self-esteem and humility are avatars of God's creativity that we get to have as divine expressions of that. Now I've talked about whose we are this poem came up in my memories on Facebook. So this is what I'm going to leave you with. A wonderful poet named Nikita Gill. 93% stardust. After Carl Sagan, who gave her hope as a child. We have calcium in our bones, iron in our veins, carbon in our souls and nitrogen in our brains, 93% stardust, with souls made of flames. We are just stars that have people names. <laughs> so now I'm sure that they're going to have an amazing song for you.